Like if someone would have just told me, I would have spared myself from like hair loss, hormonal imbalances, fatigue, a whole lot. Hey beautiful people, it's Melissa from Choosing My Health and I teach you how to transition to a whole food, plant-based lifestyle and thrive. And today I'm gonna show you how to avoid common deficiencies found in vegans and talk through the ways to slay these nutritional gaps. This is especially important if you're new to the journey or if you have doubts about meeting your nutritional requirements because I know firsthand the damage these gaps can do and it ain't pretty, okay? As many of you know, I started out my health journey on a vegan diet, now whole food plant-based, but if I knew how to avoid these deficiencies early on, like if someone would have just told me, I would have spared myself from like hair loss, hormonal imbalances, fatigue, a whole lot. And I don't want that to happen to you. Or if it has, you know, I wanna show you ways that you could reverse it and get better. So let's talk about how to ensure these vital vitamins and essential nutrients don't slip through the cracks so your health is on point, okay? Let's go. Vitamin B12 is like the VIP of nutrients for those on a vegan diet. It's important for everyone, but for those following a vegan or a plant-based diet, it's especially crucial. Without it, you could experience fatigue, and weakness, hair loss, numbness, you know, pins and needles, even nerve damage. One way humans get it is through animals, which can be difficult to absorb. And animals accumulate this bacterial product through manure exposure and untreated water. Another way some animals get it though, is through B12 supplementation in their feed. This was pretty interesting to me because I low key did have doubts, you know, about going meat free because I thought animals were the only way I could get B12 and that if I had to supplement, then something was off, right? But when I found out that many animals nowadays also take B12 supplements, I was like, oh, I ain't the only one then. And that's because originally we could get B12 from bacteria present in plant foods, but a lot of modern day hygienic practices like pesticides and sanitizing, antibiotics, no longer make them a reliable source of this bacterial product for humans or animals. So really everyone, regardless of their diet, should monitor their B12 levels. Apart from taking a supplement, some foods that can also provide some B12 include B12 fortified plant milks, cereals, and nutritional yeast flakes, chlorella, and even some mushrooms. Hands down though, the easiest way to make sure you are good is to take a B12 supplement as your insurance policy because it's that important. You only need about 2.4 micrograms a day. And this one is a little ironic. So the irony is that vegans can sometimes be iron deficient. The reason for this may simply be not eating enough iron rich foods or eating mainly processed vegan foods. Now, if you're weak, your hands and feet are always cold, your hair is falling out in droves, you have heavy cycles, shortness of breath, get a blood test done and check on those iron levels. You don't wanna be anemic. Thankfully, there are tons of vegan friendly foods that can provide all of your iron needs on a meatless diet. Dark leafy greens, lentils, beans, beets, oats are just some of the iron packed foods you can splurge on. Another thing to mention is that some people will be quick to say that heme iron found in animal foods is more easily absorbed by our bodies than non-heme iron found in plant-based foods. And while that may be true, when you pair non-heme iron foods with vitamin C, not only does it help the body absorb more iron, but research shows it can even surpass the bioavailability of heme iron foods. This makes dark leafy greens, beans, broccoli, and all them good old iron rich plant-based foods a safe and effective way to get iron into your diet. And I say safe because research shows that meat, especially red meat, comes with a litany of health complications. According to the study, high red meat intake was positively associated with all types of cancers, including cancer of the breast, colon, lung, and more. Thankfully, you don't need animal products to have a balanced diet and healthy iron levels. If you're outdoors often and you're getting good sunlight, this may not even be an issue for you. But if you're not, you definitely wanna make sure you're getting enough vitamin D regardless of your diet. Vitamin D deficiency symptoms include fatigue, muscle weakness, bone pain or achiness, feelings of sadness, getting sick more easily and more. So animal products are not the only source of vitamin D foods. Some mushrooms contain vitamin D. In fact, some commercially sold mushrooms contain higher amounts of vitamin D too, due to intentionally being exposed to high amounts of ultraviolet light that according to research 
can be just as effective as a vitamin D supplement in raising vitamin D levels. Of course, you can also get vitamin D by spending time in the sun, which is my favorite because it triggers your body to produce vitamin D naturally. So here's a question for you. What are some plant foods you eat that have helped you maintain a balanced lifestyle? Let me know in the comments. So this next one doesn't get a lot of attention, but it's super important. This little mineral may not get as much press, but it's essential for good health. Zinc helps support a strong immune system, you guys, promotes healthy skin and nails, and even aids in wound healing. If you're experiencing hair loss, changes in your nails, impotence, weight loss, wounds taking a long time to heal, skin changes that look like eczema, but won't go away with creams, check your zinc levels. The average recommendation uh, for zinc, according to the National Institutes of Health, the NIH, is 11 milligrams a day for men and eight milligrams for women. Thankfully, there are plenty of plant-based sources of zinc to choose from. Nuts, seeds, beans, whole grains, and tofu are all great choices. A high and easy source of zinc are pumpkin seeds. Just one tablespoon is about two milligrams of zinc which is about a quarter of your daily requirement if you're a woman. One tablespoon is really easy to double or even triple in salads and smoothies, all types of tasty dishes, so many options. So you can really get a lot of zinc this way. I love to sprinkle pumpkin seeds, really any type of seeds on my meals. Of course, this is not the only way to get zinc, but I love pumpkin seeds because they give me so much zinc in such a small amount. Now this one is pretty big. <laughs> Calcium, the mineral that keeps our bones strong and our teeth healthy, is especially important later in life to prevent osteopenia and osteoporosis, so you're not, you know, like breaking them bones. It's considered essential because our bodies can't produce it. Even though some vegans are low in calcium, a plant-based diet is pretty abundant in high calcium foods. Signs that you could be low in calcium are muscle aches, pain in the arms or thighs when you're walking or moving, dry, broken, brittle nails, alopecia, tooth decay, just to name some. The current average recommendation for calcium intake, according to the NIH, is 1,000 milligrams per day for females 19 to 50 years old, 1,200 milligrams per day for females 50 plus, 1,000 milligrams per day for males 19 to 70, and 1,200 milligrams per day for males 70 plus. Now, the best way to avoid calcium deficiency is by eating a balanced diet. However, there are two things to consider. Number one, be intentional about including calcium foods in your diet. In particular, foods that have calcium the body can easily absorb. This includes fortified plant-based milks, calcium set tofu, and low oxalate leafy greens such as kale, bok choy, broccoli, watercress, and turnip greens. Aim for at least three cups of these throughout the day. And you compare this with medium to lower calcium plant foods like beans, almonds, chia seeds, tahini, okra, butternut squash, and sweet potatoes to easily meet your requirements. And number two, I mentioned lower oxalate greens because oxalates, though they are a naturally occurring compound in food, can bind to the calcium in the digestive tract, preventing calcium absorption. So some plant foods are high in calcium, but they are also high in oxalates, making them harder for your body to absorb. Some high oxalate foods are spinach, Swiss chard, beet greens, for example. But you can remove a good amount of oxalates from these foods by simply boiling them and making it easier to absorb the calcium. Also, pairing your calcium foods with protein helps the body to absorb calcium even when paired with lower calcium foods. Of course, if the goal is to raise your calcium levels, you definitely want to eat foods that are high in calcium but also low in oxalates. Foods high in calcium and low in oxalates are kale, bok choy, broccoli, watercress, turnip greens, mustard greens, a whole lot. So you can definitely get all the calcium you need on a meatless diet by paying attention to these important factors. Now let's talk about not missing this important fatty acid for the brain. When it comes to maintaining a healthy brain and body, getting enough essential omega-3 fatty acids is key. Now DHA is one of these crucial omega-3s that supports brain development, mental clarity, and heart health. While some foods contain DHA, the body can also convert another omega-3, ALA, into DHA. However, this conversion process is not very efficient, so it's important to eat enough foods rich in ALA and DHA. Good sources of ALA include flaxseed, chia seeds, and walnuts. Sources of DHA include algae, like seaweed, nori, spirulina, and chlorella. 
These algae are actually one of the few plant foods containing DHA. And while DHA can be found in fatty fish like salmon and mackerel, research has found that fish can have mercury levels up to 89% higher than the maximum limit and that higher fish intake can be linked to higher mercury levels in the body. Another option for DHA intake is a vegan DHA supplement derived from algae. Iodine is an essential mineral that plays a vital role in maintaining a healthy thyroid function. Without sufficient iodine, your thyroid gland can't produce enough thyroid hormones, leading to a range of health issues such as fatigue, weight gain, and goiter. Several vegan-friendly foods high in iodine that can help you meet your daily iodine requirements is seaweed like kelp, nori, and kombu. And though lower, plant foods such as strawberries, organic potatoes with skin, kale and green beans and more can also contribute to your daily amount. An easy way you can get an iodine in is to sprinkle nori or kelp on your salad or eat veggie sushi. It's also a great way to add a slight fishy taste in some of your vegan dishes like chickpea tuna salads. So it is possible to have a balanced vegan diet. And like with any diet, you know, be intentional. Now, if you still have questions about going vegan or plant-based, check out Answers to Commonly Asked Questions vegans get every day. And please subscribe if you want encouragement, recipes, and plant-based education. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.